Okay, so in this uh, video I'm going to talk about um, the first things I would buy if I was starting out today as a filmmaker. Um, this, this works for somebody just trying to, you know, make films in some capacity, but it's also good for uh, if you're trying to be a director or a director of photography. This is all kind of the same thing. This is not um, how to start as a YouTuber. Um, there's a lot of overlap, and this gear definitely works for that, but this is this is more from the point of view of learning how to, learning the equipment and learning how to tell a story. It's not about the thing that is YouTube. Um, so I'm not gonna, I, I don't understand anything about YouTube. Um, so this is just gonna be about, you know, how to, how to start, you know, your journey of making movies or making TV. Uh, the very first thing, and uh, I'll talk about the order at the end, but uh, y you'll see. So the first thing, and it's kind of what everybody assumes it is, and it's the camera. Um, uh, there's uh, if YouTube would tell you buy the buy the nicest camera you can afford, um, which is a real slippery slope. Um, and film school will tell you don't buy a camera, just rent from us because uh, we have fancy cameras that are industry standard. Uh, there's an argument for both. I kind of split the difference because this is from the point of view of uh, somebody who's just trying to just trying to figure it out. Didn't not going to film school, not trying to be a YouTuber, and you're gonna want to get something used. Um, the logic behind buying something used is if you buy something new, there's a weirdness about it. There's a, there's a, there's a, there's a treating it wellness about it. And at this point in your career, you're just going to want to try to figure stuff out and you're going to inevitably, you know, break something. So it's nice to buy used stuff that's already, you know, been through the, been through the ringer. Um, both cause you can prove it's, it's, you know, longevity, but also just, you're gonna you're gonna scratch lenses. You're gonna drop your camera. You're gonna do all the terrible things, and it feels a lot less horrible when you didn't pay so much and it's used because it's already had a good life. Um, I had a buddy drop a brand new camera right out of the box and and crack it, crack the uh, the lens mount, and it was uh, not a good feeling. So, yeah, you want something used. Um, I this is gonna make me sound like a Panasonic person, and I promise you, I'm only a Panasonic person in convenience. I started on Sony. I have a Blackmagic camera. I've used tons of Canons, um, but I'm going to recommend the Panasonic G7 or the GH4. And I'll talk about why, um, but these are, you know, you can get a used one on eBay, three to four hundred bucks. Uh, maybe, maybe up to five hundred bucks for the GH4. So it's just a little bit fancier of a camera. Um, there's pros and cons to both of these. The GH4 is a little bit older, but it's also a little bit more of a filmmaker's camera. The G7 just has convenient features that are nice. Um, I believe it has Bluetooth, uh, which can help for stuff later. The GH4 doesn't. Um, but you want mirrorless, um, and I'll talk about why uh, later. And you want a flippy screen. Um... The GH4 and the G7, the screen actually articulates all the way out and all the way around, so you can basically look at the screen from anywhere, and it's incredibly helpful. Uh, the alternatives, um, any of the Sony, uh, I found the Sony 5000 series to be to be pretty pretty awesome. Um, I had an A5100, which is one of the newer 5000 series, um, but the you know it's a Sony, but it also has a flip up screen. Uh, which is not nearly as good as the articulating flippy screen of the Panasonic and a bunch of Canons, but the flip up at least lets you see the camera when you're facing the camera. So it's not the worst. Um, you can get that for as little as 150 bucks for like a NEX5, but all the way up to the A5100. Um, the A6100 fits in this category too, but it's I think it's like a $1,200 camera, so that's not worth it. So we'll call it 150 to 4. Um, but just kind of, just whatever used camera you can get, uh, uh, if, yeah, it's, I can't really recommend Fuji, uh, Nikon, sure, I guess, some of the crappier Nikons have an articulating screen, which is really good, um, but the other one is the Canon, uh, I believe it's the T3i, or anything later, so the T4i, the T5i, I think it's on like T9i now. Um, but you can get a T3i for a 250. Um, the, the reason these are a little bit cheaper than the Panasonics is the Panasonics are still getting used. 
um, which is not to say the Canons aren't. Uh, people that own Canons tend to love Canons, but the reason um, I would recommend the Panasonic or the Sony over the Canon is these are mirrorless cameras. The Canon is a mirrored camera, so it um, it basically just means that, like aftermarket lenses and third party lenses are a lot less common uh, at the, on the cheap end for Canons. Um, you can get the Canon like M50, which is a mirrorless camera, but that's like a seven or eight hundred dollar camera, so that's kind of blowing our price out of the water. So, um, but that's not to say the Canon T3i or you know like the T5i are not pretty good cameras. They're pretty good. Um, they're gonna do everything you need them to do, and they all have articulating screens. Just make sure that you're getting uh, anything newer than the T3i uh, to make sure you get the articulating screen. I believe the Rebel, the Rebel SL, so the smaller version, doesn't have an articulating screen, um, but you're going to want the flippy screen. I can't be more clear on that, because uh, you want to be able to see what you're doing when you're putting together a shot, and, and that doesn't necessarily mean standing directly behind the camera all the time. Um, you're going to want to get the kit lens. Um, and ideally, you're going to want to get the kit lens in a package with these. Um, most of the time, the G7s come with a kit lens. The GH4s tend not to, um, which is kind of weird. And the, I gotta say, the Sony makes the 16 to 50 kit lens for these uh, mirrorless cameras. I've used it. I really like it. The autofocus is pretty, pretty astounding. Um, but you're gonna want to get the kit lens because it gives you a pretty good, good range. Um, but it also gives you autofocus. And if you know enough about cameras, um, Panasonic autofocus is basically not worth using. Uh, Nikon for the same reason. Sony's is pretty good. The newer Canon, like every every increasing iteration of Canon, the autofocus seems to be better and better. But even the T3i, I would almost trust the autofocus. Um, you just need it. You just need it because it gives you a wide, gives you and it gives you a medium, and it gives you autofocus. Um, so that's one lens. Ideally, you bought it with it. Um, and then some more, a couple more lenses, uh, you're going to want the, uh, something, something around 12 millimeters. Um, that'll be your wide angle lens, uh, on a Panasonic G7, a 12 acts like a 24, which is considered wide angle. Um, on the Sony, the 12 millimeter, uh, let's see here, six, 18, acts like an 18, so that's pretty wide too. Um, but you want something 12, I'd say probably between... Uh, 10 and, I don't know, 15 millimeters is kind of what you want. That's usually wide enough, even on a Panasonic, which has a two times crop. Um, so that'll be your wide. You're also going to want a normal. So we'll just call this wide. Um, this is where it gets weird. Uh, not a lot of 25 millimeter lenses are made. Uh, even 24 millimeter is kind of hard to come by. 12 seems to be weirdly common. 25 or 24 seems to be a little bit less common, but they're out there. Um, this will be your normal. And I'll talk about why in a second. Um, then you also want a 50. And uh, the thing about the 50 that's different than the rest of these is 50 millimeter lens is the most common lens made. And so there's a huge vintage market of really awesome 50 millimeters. Um, uh, this, will be your, this will be your tight. Um, but you can also just, uh, there's a way to buy these three as a matching set. You have to buy them one at a time, but they all match. And, uh, I can prove it cause I have the lenses. Um, so the idea is you want the wide, uh, because when you're telling a story, most of the establishing shots are wide angle. Um, there's also weird fun stuff you can do with wide angles. I'm really getting into it lately. Um, 25 millimeters, your normal. That's just the dialogue lens. Basically it's, it's what everybody uses for, you know, people having a conversation. It's it's probably the most common used lens on any set, um, some version of normal. Um, and then tight is for the close-ups and, you know, details and pretty specialized. But the wide and the normal are the ones you really want to worry about, ironically, because the 50s are so common. It'd be nice if the tight was a little bit more useful, but it's not. Um, you, can buy, you can buy these on Amazon. They make these Chinese versions. I think they're called Voking. Or Bayosity. They have a bunch of different names. Um, but you can get the 12 millimeter for, let's see here, what did I say, 160. Um, 
which sounds like a lot and it is it's i mean that's that's a king's ransom honestly especially compared to the other ones is but it is 12 millimeters which is really wide and wide angle lenses tend to be really really expensive because they're just less common and a little bit harder to make uh yeah uh 25 millimeter from the same batch from the you know basically the cheapest thing you can find on amazon is going to be this 12 millimeter the next cheapest thing you're going to find on amazon is also it's going to be 25 millimeter even if the brands don't match they're probably the same lens made in the same factory honestly um, I went out of my way to match these when I bought them. I actually had a 35 in there too, which I, which I realized was not worth it. Um, but they all, they're all they all made the same. They all look, they have the same color coding and that kind of thing. Um, uh, you can get uh, the normal for 60, um, which is kind of expensive for, uh, for a normal focal length. Again, 50 millimeters on the market can go as low as like five bucks. Um, used obviously on eBay, but... 25 is just a weird a weird lens to buy. And then the tight, if you want to match it to the rest of these, uh, is about 70. But you can get used for like $5 plus a $10 adapter if you really want to. Um, that's what I did. I think I, I got a Canon 50 millimeter first. Um, love it, still use it, pretty great. Um, <clears throat> you're also gonna wanna add a battery. Actually, before I go to battery, let me explain this. Um, you want the kit lens because you want to be able to uh, zoom through the focal lengths because sometimes you'll need that, and it has autofocus. You're going to want the 12 because it's wide. You're going to want the 25 because it's normal, and the 50 because it's a tight. And intentionally, you have three of these prime lenses. That means they only have one focal length because you want to go through the process of having to swap out the lenses and then move your camera. You, there's a cognitive thing that happens when you have to physically change a lens and then go, oh crap, now my framing's bad, now I have to figure out how to fix it by moving forward, moving back, moving up, moving down, all this kind of stuff. Um, and you just don't get that with the kit lens. It, for some reason, the convenience of the kit lens is also why it's so terrible, which is you just don't think about composing your shot when you're doing a kit lens. You just zoom in until everything's framed where you think it should be framed, and that's it. And uh, it's just... You're gonna you're gonna appreciate having to physically figure out how to make a 12 millimeter work or a 25 or a 50 instead of just zoom and ready to, ready to go. So there's a time and place for zoom lenses, but when you're learning filmmaking, uh, it's really not very helpful. So um, extra battery uh, or or um, a dummy battery. Uh, uh, extra batteries up to 20 bucks maybe 20 dummy battery could be up to 40 so um, a dummy battery is just it's it looks like a battery you plug it into your camera like a battery but it has a cable coming out that you can plug into something else um, I found one with the USB which is really incredible because now I can just run it everything off of USB um, dummy batteries are nice just because if you plug them into a big USB source like even the wall in theory you can run your camera forever um, you know, never say never because these Sonys tend to overheat because of how small they are, but these Panasonics will run until you run out of card. So, um, dummy battery, extra battery, some kind of battery. It depends. All these cameras, with the exception of the Sony, are pretty frugal with how much battery life they use, especially when you're shooting 1080. Um, the Sonys just aren't. They're just thirsty and they overheat, uh, which is why I sold mine. But, you know, 150 bucks, you can get a heck of a deal. Um, and then the other thing you want, you want sound. And uh, for this, there's just a cheap, um, I think it's called Pop Voice uh, Lav Mic. Lav stands for Lavalier. It's that little lapel mic that you clip to like your jacket or your shirt. And uh, the thing about these Pop Voices is they have a phone connection. And what you're going to do is you're going to mic your actors by having, I don't know, three of these. We'll call it 45 bucks. It's three actors. And they're just going to plug that right into their phone. And they're going to click voice record on their phone. And that's how you're going to take audio. It's a, it's a hack I figured out a couple, a couple years ago. It's unreal. It's unreal. Um, the alternate way to do this is you want a cheap shotgun. 
which is the mic that is like that big straight mic that comes off the front of a camera like that you know here's your here's your camera and it's this it's this big black mic on top um cheap shotguns are, are terrible the, the quality of them is really really bad but it's better than the camera that's kind of the only thing you can say so i wouldn't spend more than about 20 bucks on one um apparently there's better ones now but you know here's your camera here's the articulating screen um yeah it's just it's just not worth it um uh, so a cheap shotgun that uh, will plug into your camera um you're gonna have to check when you get your camera whether or not it has an audio jack and or a mic jack uh, i believe the gh4 probably has both the g7 only has the mic jack most of the sony's don't have a mic jack the canons are pretty good about that uh, but most of these don't have audio jacks because you want to be listening to your audio when you're recording um, for mistakes. And uh, it's kind of hard to do. There's ways around it when you don't have a mic jack or where, an audio jack, but it's not great. But you kind of want to have your camera have a mic jack. I don't think the 5000 series has a mic jack, though. I don't think my A5100 did. Um, so to add to that, you could do a digital recorder. And the one I recommend is actually the one I use and I've had for eight years now, and it's this uh, Tascam. Um, you can find it used for, I don't know, 50 bucks. You can buy it new for like 70, I think, um, 75. Uh, Zoom makes one too. That's a little bit more expensive. I think it's like 100. But uh, for what it is, it's pretty spectacular. And uh, yeah, I just, record my, I just record my audio right into this. The lab that I'm talking to right now goes right into that. So, yep. Um, uh, and then, yeah. And so, you know, you want to add this up. Call it $500 for a camera plus another, let's see, 160 which is 660 720 uh, $790. Call it 40 bucks. So that's 8 uh, 830 875 plus 75 is 950 so you know most of it's used obviously but for hundred thousand bucks probably a thousand with tax um, your camera set up for making movies including lenses and everything else I mean there's little stuff that you kind of want to get to like lens wipes and uh, maybe like an ND filter neutral density but at this moment I could with with this package I could go make a film and I wouldn't be embarrassed about it. And I could and I could swap lenses because I would be desperate to swap lenses. Um, because again, establishing shots on the wide, conversation on the on the normal, and then the shocking reveal on the close-up lens. So um, some other stuff you want to get. Uh, we'll go over here. Lights. And um, YouTube would have you believe that. Uh, the way to go is to get the fa the fanciest, most expensive LED light you can afford. And honestly, I've considered it, but it's just not practical. Especially because this is where you're going to save a shitload of money. Um, you know, you've paid almost $1,000 for a $400 camera, basically. Uh, which is really hard to accept at the beginning, but once you realize how important these lenses are, you're going to be like, holy crap, deal of the century. Um... The lights, you're just going to do Home Depot lights. Uh, they make this can light, which is $10 per. Uh, you're going to get maybe 100 to 200 watt bulbs. And they're like, at most, $5 per. And then you're going to get a dimmer, maybe one, maybe two. Call it $10 per. So these are just regular, these are regular incandescent house lights, and uh, you're going to want four of them for a total price of, let's see here, 40 plus 20 plus another 40, so 80 and 20 is 100 bucks. That ain't bad. I mean, this it's a lot for what it is, but that ain't bad. That's what I use. Um, there's no use in, in getting fancy lights at this point. Um, I'm just getting to the point in my career where the quality of lights actually makes a difference. Um, and most of the time it doesn't. Even, you know, for this stuff, I couldn't care less. It's just whatever light was closest to me. I even have this really hideous shadow right here that 
who cares, right? Um, yeah, but these little can lights, uh, you're probably gonna want to get a uh, a couple other things too. It's uh, this thing called a flex fill. It's also called five in one reflector. Um, it's this big round disc, and it's kind of what the biggest one you can get. I think you can get them for like ten to twenty. We'll call it twenty. And uh, when you when you open it up, it's this big elastic, rigid, semi-rigid disc thing that um, one side is silver, one side is gold, one side is white, one side is black. And then if you actually unzip it and take it apart, there's a like a, a semi-transparent uh, white thing that we use as diffusion to diffuse the light. Um, holy crap! Every every project I've ever worked on, if we didn't have one, we wanted one. And most of the time, I just bring the pair that I have. I have some huge ones. I think they're like 36 inches, which is kind of silly, but honestly, the bigger the better. They fold into nothing. The 36 inch ones fold into a, a, a soft baggie that big. So, um, yeah, super helpful. Uh, and or you're probably going to want a sheet or a shower curtain. White, obviously. Um, we'll call it 10 bucks. Uh, just because it's a good way to it's a good way to uh, put a, a light through it to make it look soft, so it's it's just it's helpful. So for 130 bucks, um, that's going to be your light kit. Mine is in a is in a little like tote, a clear tote that I paid like three bucks for. Um, very very useful. And again, if this stuff breaks, you're out 130 bucks if if it falls off the back of a truck. So that's that's that ain't bad. Um, other stuff, uh, you're going to want to do apps. And uh, most of these apps you don't actually have to buy. Uh, the one that you do have to buy, I'll explain why, but um, you want some kind of director's viewfinder. Um, I'm really liking the free one. It's called Magic Viewfinder, and you just, whatever make of your camera is, you download that one. So I have a Magic Panasonic viewfinder, or Lumix, I think. It's called Ma Magic Lumix viewfinder, and I can just plug in G7 with a 12 millimeter lens, and it'll, on my phone, show me what I need to, what what the what the point of view looks like. So that's incredibly helpful. Um, the other one is Sunseeker. I believe you have to pay like a dollar or two dollars for Sunseeker, but basically it's a GPS app where you, you look through your camera on your phone at where the sun's gonna be, and it'll tell you the time of day and where the sun is going to track and all this kind of stuff because you want to, you know, have control over where the sun's going to be um, or vice versa, I guess. And then the other one that's expensive and by expensive, I mean like eight bucks is Filmic Pro. And um, I've really hated on this app in the past uh, because I think it kind of works against you in a lot of ways, but I keep re-downloading it. So there's something about Filmic Pro on Android and on iPhone that, man, I can't quit you. Um, Filmic Pro can can make your iPhone mimic all of this, except for maybe the sound. Um, but it's really good at mimicking lenses and act and turning your iPhone into a proper, like even more effective than this kind of camera. It it basically gives you cinema camera buttons on your iPhone. Uh, the big trade-off is um, because it's just a touch screen, obviously it's your, your iPhone, um, all those little adjustments that a cinema camera would have a knob or a dial or a button for, you have to physically do with your thumbs, kind of like a racing game on, on your phone, and it's just, it's frustrating. Um, but for what it is, it's helpful. Um, I would not, I would not say, oh, you know what, scratch this camera, just get the film of Pro. I think that's a terrible mistake. But if you want to learn cinematography really, really fast, Filmic Pro is very effective at that. It's just not very helpful when you're actually, you know, trying to shoot. So, um, oh yeah, I, and a couple other things. Um, these are also camera things. Oh, you want a tripod? I forgot that up here, so we'll just call it its own thing. We'll say 20, no, oh, 10, 10 bucks for the whole thing. Uh, when you get a tripod, uh, YouTube's going to tell you you want to get the nicest tripod you can afford. And they're going to say stuff like fluid head and bowl leveling head and uh, quick release and um, weight limits, that kind of thing. 
at this point in your career, uh, that's that is toxic. Just get you know whatever whatever used tripod you can find. If your grandpa has one in the in the basement, get that one. Um, as long as it has metal legs and possibly a metal head, you're in good shape. Um, I have a I have a 1980s aluminum Velbon tripod that my dad had, and everywhere I take it, somebody else has one. It's the weirdest thing, and I have beat the crap out of it. I've broken all the legs, and they kind of work, and that's good enough. Um, the thing this is getting filmed on is my better tripod, but I can't quit that silver Velbon tripod. It's just it's good, and metal legs, man, they save you. So uh, whatever you want to pay, up to a hundred bucks. Um, I wouldn't spend more than 100 bucks on your first tripod. I think it's a terrible idea. Um, just because this is going to be the first thing you, you change in your kit. Um, once, you get, once you get going and you figure out how, how, to, how to work and what your filming style is, then you can get a tripod with features that you actually need, like the ability to move the camera on the tripod in a fluid way. That's what the fluid head is for. Um, leveling heads are just helpful for putting a tripod on a non-flat surface, all these little things. But at this point, it's in the least important thing. You just got to get a tripod that will not is, is, is sturdy enough that's not going to tip over. So don't get a plastic one. For the love of God, don't let your only tripod be one of those Gorilla Pods. It's a horrible, horrible idea, and every one of my peers has done it. Um, I'm a little guilty of it myself. It's not worth it. So um, uh, You're also going to want... Uh, hard drive and you don't want a fancy one um, I recommend two terabytes to start that's a pretty decent number you're not gonna need 16 but you're definitely not gonna need one um, you can get it for like 60 bucks on Amazon um, I don't recommend buying used uh, hard drives I have bought used hard drives in the past I think it's not worth the risk um, hard drives especially spinning hard drives that are not SSDs today are so cheap it's almost irresponsible to not buy a new one um, but you want a hard drive so we'll add 160 um, and then the other only other thing is a notebook I'm gonna give it a big star actually and I know this is kind of kind of douchey and kind of cliched and kind of a kind of a uh, Dead Post Society situation, but you need a notebook um, just because it's going to be the most useful thing you do. Um, I, I, I mean, I carry a notebook for everything, but, um, you know, you need to write storyboards, which are those little cartoons, uh, shot lists, these schedules, um, uh, lighting diagrams. I, I've done a lot of lighting diagrams lately which is where you just draw the floor plan of where you're shooting and you figure out where you want the lights and the camera to go. That's what a lighting diagram is. Um, and then just writing, you know? And uh, although I do write notes in my phone like crazy, man, th there's something unique about a notebook. I have a notebook that actually you can take the leaves out and put in fresh, uh, fresh leaves. But um, yeah, you need a notebook. Call it five bucks. So for 950, uh, 1100, 1235 is what we were at. For a robust um, shooting kit uh, that includes camera sound, uh, accessories, apps, and lights. Um, that's, I mean, that'll, that'll, this, this is a set. All this brought to set can a set make, honestly. You just need actors and you just need a location at that point. Um, everything about this can be upgraded uh, in a huge way, um, all of it. Uh, but this is the, this is the cheapest way I would feel comfortable uh, starting. And what I did wrong when I did it uh, was I bought piecemeal. I bought a camera. And then I had to wait a year because I couldn't afford to buy uh, anything other than the kit lens for it. And that was kind of just not well thought out for me. It took me a long time to buy lenses. Um, I bought a battery right when I bought the camera, so that was good. 
Um, uh, I had this audio recorder since the beginning, but I, I just started using lav mics a couple of years ago just because film school teaches you that you want the boom hanging in over the talent at all times. And yes, you definitely do. But when you're starting out, lav mics going into phones is just a better way to operate, honestly. Um, and then lighting, you know, I stayed away from lighting for a long time and I've almost bought lights a few times and I'm glad I haven't because the exactly this is what I have as my set and I got no complaints. This is a 200 watt bulb on a dimmer. So yeah. Um, and let's talk about how I would, uh, how I would order the purchases and how I would, uh, just, just little things. So first of all, um, I think everyone, no matter what, needs to get the notebook and all the apps because that'll get you started. Filmic Pro especially will get you started operating the camera in a way that you're going to feel way over your head for like six months. Um, the director viewfinder, though, holy crap, that's useful. Uh, but the notebook and the apps, that's a mandatory first step. Like if you're thinking about doing filmmaking, burning $15 on that uh, is going to be really well invested because even if you decide you don't want to be a filmmaker, you're out, you know, a big lunch. Um, the next thing is if you're a director, um, you probably want to get the camera last uh, and get everything else and maybe maybe just use your phone for a little while uh, if you can't afford the camera. Obviously, the camera is the most expensive uh, aspect of this. It's, you know, almost 90% of the aspect of this. But you definitely want a tripod and you and just get one of those phone holders that screws onto a tripod and you can direct that way. I would still say probably get a light package. Um, you're definitely gonna wanna get sound and uh, still a hard drive. So just not the, not the $950 camera. Um, if you're a director of photography, yes, download Filmic Pro, uh, just like the rest of the apps. It's, it's helpful just to, just to get used to how a cinema camera operates, but the Panasonic, the Sony, the Canon, what have you is just not going to be the same. Um, but so as, as a director of photography, somebody with aspirations of working, working as a camera operator, it's the camera. And I still wouldn't say go crazy and buy more lenses or anything or buy fancy lenses. Um, YouTube. And I, I agree uh, at a certain price point says buy the best lens you can buy. It's, you know, it's kind of a cliche that I keep saying that, but the trick with lenses is they don't really Good lenses don't really depreciate in value, and they're always in demand. Um, so yes, a fourteen hundred dollar Canon like uh, L lens, like a Canon fifty millimeter one point two L, uh, if you buy it for twelve hundred bucks, you might get twelve hundred dollars back if you ever try to sell it. It might actually work that way. Uh, but we're dealing with these Chinese cheapo lenses because we're just wanting to be able to switch out focal lengths and move the camera around accordingly. You don't want to buy expensive expensive lenses at this point, um, especially because you're going to drop them, get them dirty, or break them. Uh, I'm trying to think how many lenses I've broken, because I've bought a lot of vintage lenses. I've probably broken five in the last seven years, so that's a lot. Um, and a couple of them were much more expensive than I should have should have uh, done. So, um, yeah, but the lenses... And you can also start filling in if you're a DP. Once you get this package, maybe the DP way to go is obviously get a better tripod, um, but maybe start adding in. There's a 35 millimeter that sits between this. Um, you can get, I think you can get a wide angle adapter uh, for this 12 millimeter to make it more like an eight, uh, or you can just get an eight. Uh, Rokinon eight millimeters are on eBay for a hundred bucks all the time. That's how I got mine. Um, it's not going to match the rest of these, but uh, the 8mm fisheye lens is just such a fun lens. Who cares if it doesn't color match, honestly. Um, and then, so here's, here's where we do little tips and stuff. So the lighting, lighting is good. Um, you're not going to beat Home Depot in lighting. Even Amazon. Amazon has, does, has this thing because of YouTubers now where it sells lighting packages. Like it, it bundles packages for you. It's not worth it. Um, yes, the lights are pretty good for what they are. Yes, the bundles are good savings, but you're just not going to get your mileage out of it compared to these little tiny Home Depot can lights that are, you know, $5 per. Uh, it's, you've got to go the Home Depot route for the lighting. 
Sound, sound is sound. Again, sound just doesn't evolve that much. I'm still using this guy, and it's been years. Uh, I have newer stuff now that's nicer, but again, when I'm just in a hurry, I know this thing so well, and it works well enough that I just plug it in and go. Um, so sound you're not going to really mess with, um, but the camera, you can, you can sort of game the system a little bit. So if you don't want to go this route where you're buying these Beocity Voking uh, Chinese lenses from Amazon that who knows how many they're going to make. Um, the set I bought that matches, they don't even sell anymore. They're all painted different now. Um, if you don't want to go that way, uh, go on to Craigslist, go on to eBay. People are selling GH4s with everything they bought with them. And uh, it's going to be probably a little bit more expensive than a thousand bucks. But to, to, to inherit a filmmaker's like camera is, is just saves so much trouble. Um, for instance, a lot of people with the GH4s or even the original Blackmagic pocket camera will have these Russian lenses and that they put together as a kit and they're getting rid of the kit because obviously those lenses don't fit their new bigger camera. But when you're starting out, you know, you're going to be using this GH4 to the life of it, getting a freaking sweet set of, you know, five or six Russian lenses or like, um, or some like C-mount, uh, uh, super eight lenses or super 16 lenses as a kit, just in the, in the, in the batch is kind of cool. Um, I almost pulled the trigger on it a couple times because Every, even in, even in Denver, which is not a filmmaking hub, um, a GH4 will show up on Craigslist for like $2,000 for what would really be like four or $5,000 worth of equipment once you count the lenses and, you know, all the support equipment, a camera cage, um, which I have opinions about. Um, it's just basically body armor for your camera. But so there's a way to, there's a way to get, and, and even can, the, in Canon world, even though I don't really prefer Canons because uh, lens adaptability is not really very good for Canons. You pretty much have to buy Canons or Rokinons, and that's that's it. Tamron, I guess, but that's too expensive. Sigma, that's too expensive. Um, but even then, uh, you can you can find like a Canon T3i with maybe like a three lens Rokinon set on on eBay or something. That's a pretty good system. Um, I would say if you can afford Rokinon lenses and not these cheap Chinese lenses, then uh, do that. But honestly, um, I don't think it's a good idea. Old Those old Rokinon lenses, they're too expensive for how easily they break. Um, in my experience, I've owned three and I've broken one already just because it was old. Um, but yeah, to, to find a bundle, to find like a, a wedding filmmaker or um, a, a film production house that is getting rid of like a G7 package or like a Sony A6000 package um, might be the way to go if it comes with lenses and on all the other, you know, the extra batteries. Um, maybe it comes with a mic. It'll probably come with uh, some kind of uh, uh, like external battery situation. Sometimes it comes in a, in, in, you know, with like a follow focus, although you don't really need that. Um, so it's, it's just interesting. Um, I went down the route of, yeah, again, buying in piecemeal one at a time. I would have my Sony with my Sony lens for a year, and I would have picked up a Canon FD 50 millimeter with a like a, a $4 adapter, and I just had that for a while. Um, it was not helpful for focal length reasons, for swapping lenses, but it was helpful for just getting me working, uh, you know, getting me to pull focus and operate the camera, that kind of thing. Um, yeah, so if you... Again, for for twelve hundred bucks, I think this is impossible to beat um, for what it is, especially if it's a G seven or G H four. Um, for for fifteen hundred bucks, you're entering like a used G H four cinema package territory, and that's a really interesting place to be. Um, there there is one thing, one little caveat with that though eBay has decided now these I think it's just one company honestly in Russia is is taking these old Russian lenses and putting to the cinevising them which I don't it's not really worth going into but basically they just put like follow focus gears on the focus ring and they're selling them as a package and they're marking them up like hilariously expensive they're they're, they're charging like 400 or 800 dollars for this three lens package on eBay 
cinema ready, you know, already have the adapters on them for your, for your Panasonic or whatever, don't do that. Um, it's not worth it. If anything, it's worth buying those lenses individually and then just screwing on the adapter because it takes 10 seconds to screw on an adapter. Um, but if you don't want to mess with adapters and at this point in your career, you definitely probably don't, um, whatever camera you get, just make sure the lenses have that format. So if you get a Panasonic, you need micro four thirds. You need to make sure that this Voking wide is a micro four thirds. That this 25 normal is micro four thirds, that kind of thing. Canon for the same reason. Um, we're in a situation now where basically every camera company has two different uh, lens mount sizes. So you have to pay a little bit of attention. For instance, the Canon T3i is an EF mount. Actually, it's EFS, but... Um, but they also sell the Canon M50, which is a M mount. Uh, and you, you know, unless you're buying the M50, which again is 800 bucks, so you're already doubling your cost. Um, you got to make sure that your lenses for your Canon T3i are EF mount lenses or EFS. Either one, both work. Um, Sony for the same thing. You need E mount. You need MFT for micro four thirds, that kind of thing. Um, yeah, but yeah, this is, uh, but again, just make sure you have multiple lenses. That's the whole thing is you want to be able to go through the process of swapping out lenses and problem solving because it's all about the learning. Um, and that's also why you want the flippy screens. You want to be able to see what you're doing and pull focus and everything. Um, this is why the Sony is a little bit less, less great, but it does have good autofocus and the Canons are hit and miss because, um, you pretty much have to pay more money, even though you can get a camera body for 250 bucks, um, the lenses yet you can actually get are a lot more expensive than 60, 70 and 160. So, um, some takeaways. Uh, when starting out, you got to get the used gear. You're, there's no reason to get new gear. You're going to get a better deal on used gear. The used gear is proven and or on its way out. So if you drop it and shatter it or drop it and smash it or whatever, it's not the end of the world. Um, there's no reason at this price point to probably get any version of insurance on your equipment, but on the next step up, you definitely do. Um, make sure you get everything that's on the same level of professionalism or quality. Um, for instance, if you're going to get a Panasonic G7, it's really hard to justify like Rokinon lenses or Panasonic branded lenses because they're 20 times more expensive. It's 60 times more expensive um, than 60 bucks. So, um, yeah. And, and the idea is once you're ready to get rid of the G7, you'll have also outgrown these three focal lengths. Um, although the 12, I'll never get rid of. I'll always have a 12 just because it's useful. But you can always get, you know, if you, if you, up, if you side grade and you upgrade to a Canon, you can get, uh, I think, a 16 millimeter, which is pretty close. They sell a 24 50 millimeter lens as their cheapest lens in their entire lineup. So, yeah. So when you're ready to, basically when you're ready to outgrow this kit, you basically just wholesale get rid of it, except for probably the audio, because the audio doesn't change. Um, because the batteries are not compatible between makes, basically. Basically, every new camera has a different battery. So, which is why on Craigslist, these GH4, like, holy shit packages keep showing up, because... There's no way to, if whatever they could have kept or converted, they already have. So, um, uh, buy, buy things you can afford, um, but, uh, make sure that, um, let's see just what I said. Buy things. Oh yeah. Buy, so buy things as you can afford them, um, which is kind of what I did piecemeal, but it's really a good idea to buy the whole package. Like you're better off instead of spending $400 on a Panasonic G7 and having nothing else. You're better off waiting uh, and, and getting up to the 950 and then paying for the whole thing all at once. Um, if, you, if you just want to handle the G7 and while you're waiting, which is kind of what I did, it's okay. It's not going to set you back. You're going to learn the camera really fast, but it's just, it's a better, you're going to learn more in a shorter amount of time if you buy the whole camera package at once, um, which is why 950 is the number and not 2,500 or 5,000 or, you know, how much does a set of, a full set of Rokinons cost these days? 2,100 bucks, 
plus a camera, like, no, not, not going to happen. Um, uh, basically just use the crap out of all of what you have because, um, that's what it's designed for. It's designed to be learned on. This is all designed to be learned on. It's not precious. Although I have a soft spot in my heart for the Panasonic G7. I really do. Um, but it's designed to be used and abused, and this is the end of its life, basically. The next, the, the, when you sell it off, you're not going to sell it off for any amount of money. You're really not. Um, but you will sell it off because it's not worth keeping at that point. I was a period where I had like 10 camera bodies on my shelf, and I was just like, what are you doing, dude? Like, you don't use any of them, and they're just, like, you sunk money into them. What do you, just get, get rid of them. Don't be, don't be picky. Don't be... Like, I, I allow myself to be sentimental about one piece of gear per category, so I'm sentimental about one microphone, sentimental about one lens, sentimental about one camera body, because uh, otherwise then you start hoarding stuff and you're just pissing your money away. Um, so just use it, and when you're ready to move up, start moving up. Uh, moving up is tricky, because uh, you're not going to get anything cheaper than this, uh, or even as cheap as. The next step up in quality... Uh, so, like, going from a G7 or a GH4 to the GH5 is pretty much the way to go. And that's, instead of a four or $500 lens, that's a, or a camera, that's a $1,000 camera. So you're doubling it. Uh, it's even more with lenses. Um, you know, like a 12 mil the, the Rokinon 12 millimeter is a $300 lens versus 160 So you've already doubled it right there. Um, so, yeah. And the order, the order I would, I would upgrade is I would, I would be learning the camera and I'd be trying to work on stuff as much as possible. The lights are a fixed thing. If somebody brings a fancier light kit to set, God bless them. But you can, you can do everything on this light kit. It does not matter. Um, maybe add like a black sheet to it, to the white sheet. But that's all I would probably add, honestly. Maybe gels. Um, so I'd use the crap out of it. I would... Upgrade the tripod as soon as I could afford to, just because once you start using the crappy tripod, you're going to realize, like, its weaknesses, and for 150 200 bucks, 300 bucks, you can get the next step up in quality uh, tripod, and for, like, eight or a thousand, hundred, 800 or 1000 bucks, you can get a proper tripod that's going to last you the rest of your life. I'm not even there yet. Um... All my peers that are working have all bought the fancy tripod, and I just can't bring myself to do it. Um, so I would go, I would go tripod first, upgrade, um, then probably uh, maybe audio. Honestly, I would probably upgrade audio just because it's nice to have several lav mics and one or two recorders um, and a shotgun. It's always nice to have a shotgun on the camera. It's not necessary when you're starting out, but it's nice to have one. Because you can always take that shotgun off and put it on a boom, and then you got your boom situation. Um, and then once I once I'm too big of a goldfish for the the camera and the lenses, that's when I would consider upgrading. Uh, but I would do the same thing again. I would I would either you know, go to maybe the Panasonic GH5. That way I could keep my lenses, and then slowly get lenses that match the GH5. Because um, these technically do, but they're you know the GH5 is such a bumping quality you kind of want to match that with roken on lenses or something um or or just do a whole you know i'm i'm brand agnostic uh if canon's m line suddenly comes out with like an incredible camera that's actually at a decent price it might be worth selling my lenses too and investing in canon m uh mounted glass um yeah so that's the thing i tried really hard right when i started out to have, uh, I think I started with the Sony because I knew that I could adapt everything to the Sony, like everything. Uh, but then I realized if I get rid of my Sony, um, some of those lenses are Sony lenses, and so they're gone, um, and I'm and I'm having to start over. So now I actually do it differently. Um, everything is somehow a Canon EF mount because the Canon EF mount is so is so long that. All the other Canon mounts, or all the other mounts, exist inside of that big width, and so you can adapt from Canon EF to basically everything else. Um, 
So that's kind of what I've done. What I've done recently is everything is is some version going into the Canon EF mount, and then I'll just adapt it to Micro Four Thirds because I have a Micro Four Thirds camera. When I have a Sony camera, I can just grab the Sony, the Canon to Sony adapter, that kind of thing. Um, yeah, lenses and cameras are a black hole that you can fall into. This is my attempt at keeping you out of the black hole. Um, more batteries is always better. Also, uh, I think I average three batteries per camera. I think my black magic, I have like six. Um, so yeah, uh, just, you know, good luck. This is all, this is all made up numbers, obviously, but the idea is, you know, you want to have your sound covered, you want to have your lighting covered, and then your camera is a package. It's not just the camera. It's not photography where you just have a camera. You need the whole the whole shebang, and especially the ability to swap out these lenses. I can't be more clear about that. Um, some people are going to tell you zoom lenses are better, and for a lot of reasons they are, for a lot of reasons they're not. But at the end of the day, if you want to learn, you want to put the 12 millimeter on, realize that you're seeing like the lighting hang down and the audio hang down. You're going to be like, oh crap, I need to put on the 25 in order to get this shot because... 12 is too wide, that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, that's, that's what I would do.